Welcome to the HPG Blackout, where we do not care if you are a Catherine Loyalist or Victor Ally, because we love all big stompy robots, regardless of which side they fight for. Today we explore the Fedcom Civil War. But since Comstar still has us in a blackout, we need your help to get our signal out by liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content just like this. The Fedcom Civil War was a profound event in the inner sphere and near periphery, shaping the lives of trillions. The political love story between Prince Hans Davian and Melissa Steiner catalyzed this event. Their marriage and subsequent formation of the Federated Commonwealth Alliance in 3022 marked the end of the Third Succession War. Their bond overcame opposition and was strengthened by unified military academies, tech advancements, and shared threats from rival nations. Yet, the relationship was not without its troubles. Fears of a Federated Sun's takeover sparked unrest, culminating in the establishment of the armed forces of the Federated Commonwealth in 3042. This period was further strained by officers' resentment, significant war losses against the clans, and economic pressures. Tensions climaxed with Prince Hans's death and Archon Melissa's assassination in 3055, destabilizing the alliance. In the ensuing turmoil, Melissa's son Victor assumed leadership but faltered politically. His sister Catherine seized this opportunity, leading to the separation of the Liren state. Despite Victor's military efforts to regain control, Catherine's political maneuvers successfully established her rule over the Federated Commonwealth, much to the populace's discontent, who accused her of creating a police state. As the nation teetered on the brink of war, the death of Arthur Steiner Davian forced Victor's hand, leading to decisive historical events. Despite his initial reluctance, Victor was compelled to challenge Catherine's rule, setting the stage for the Fedcom Civil War. Thus, a pivotal chapter in history unfolded reminding us of the profound impact of politics and personal relationships on the fate of nations. In 3062, a civil war erupted in the Federated Commonwealth, sparked by the heavy-handed rule of Archon Princess Catherine Steiner Davian. Tensions spiraled into riots and conflicts across key worlds, with a notable and significant riot on Solaris 7. The assassination of Arthur Steiner Davian escalated the situation, compelling Victor Steiner Davian to rebel against his sister, fueling the war further. Internally, the Federated Sons were in turmoil under the Archon's reign, peaking in the Capellan March. There, Duke Hazek barely managed to control the situation amidst a war with the St. Ives Compact. The Archon's lack of support ignited conflict on Cathil, leading to war concentrated mainly in the Capellan March. Meanwhile, Duke James Sandoval exploited this crisis to gain substantial ground against the Draconis Combine. Within the Lyran Alliance, divisions were evident, not merely along Catherine versus Victor lines, but primarily concerning the issue of rightful rulership. This civil war was born from the capital's orders, but grew more complex as additional figures entered the fray. Duke James Sandoval's successful yet unanticipated attack on the Draconis Combine led to the capture of four vital Combine worlds, reinforcing his support base and rallying his people. The Civil War intensified towards the end of 3062 and early 3063, obligating key figures to pick sides while ordinary citizens navigated the escalating crisis. Despite objections, Catherine's propaganda persuaded many of her benevolent rule. With the conflict's progression, 
political machinations and military tactics came to the forefront, often at the cost of scapegoats and the truth. The significant escalation of the civil war within the former Federated Commonwealth began in March 3063. Victor and his supporters in the Lyran Alliance sought a proactive strategy, while Catherine and her advisors underestimated the situation, viewing it as a minor annoyance. Civilian tensions escalated, yet the AFS and LAAF stayed on standby. Catherine's followers controlled public communication, but news of the war was spread using the Fedcom fax network and Comstar. In late 3062, AFFS officers faced a test of loyalty. Catherine sent enforcers to ensure fidelity while Marshal Jackson Davian backed Catherine. Ardan Sortek, critical of Catherine's rule, rallied anti-Catherine officers within the AFFS, thwarting a premature end to the war. Elsewhere, the Lyran Alliance saw relative peace save for border worlds and areas impacted by the Flashpoint. Political support for Victor existed within the Lyran Alliance, yet Duke Morgan Kell's forces steered clear of direct conflict with Loyalist forces to prevent Jade Falcon's intervention. Unrest grew due to oppressive actions by General Nandi Steiner, the regent of the Alliance and Catherine's supporter, Duke Sandoval operating within the Draconis Combine, faced resource limitations and began raiding DCMS supplies, even deploying cargo dropships to secure military gear. On Marduk, AFFS engineers assessed factory damage, intending to transport mechs to the Federated Suns. The first wave of the Civil War revealed the impending devastation for both factions. Conflicts in Alcyone and Sirdar, the campaign against the first Davion guards on New Avalon, and ongoing strife on Cathil underscored the deep-seated hostility. As orders for ruthless actions were issued from New Avalon, some Loyalist commanders began questioning their convictions. The second phase of the Civil War in the ex-Federated Commonwealth unveiled a power struggle between Catherine and her brother, Victor. As the war shifted from controlling supplies to factions intent on annihilating each other, Victor's allied forces battled the harsh commands of the Loyalists, led by Catherine. Victor endured brutal fights within the Lyran Alliance, while strategists like Field Marshal Ardan Sortek played a chess game in the Federated Sons. Marshal of the Armies, Jackson Davian aimed to turn the tide by capturing key worlds, countering Sortek's achievements. After a narrow escape from death at Newtown Square, Victor refocused on military actions, securing resources for his war against Catherine. His allies are few, primarily Morgan Kell and the beleaguered Duke Bradford. On the other side, Nandai Steiner's tightening grip on power stirs resentment, inflaming tensions on both sides of the Catherine-Victor divide. Duke James Sandoval marked significant wins in the Draconis combined, despite a troubled landscape. Yet he lost vital support to Victor and was forced to rely on New Avalon's backing. In exchange for logistical aid, he quashed anti-Archon uprisings buoyed by the morale from his tactical victories. The war's second wave revealed a lengthy, intricate conflict challenging Catherine's weakening Loyalist forces and Victor's burgeoning movement. As the Civil War escalated, Catherine's control of information faced a severe threat from Victor, who had untapped resources from Comstar within his reach. However, Employing these resources risked exacerbating the Civil War, opening the doors for potential invasions from other adversaries. This phase of the Civil War was a test of endurance and strategy for both sides. The remnants of the Federated Commonwealth are embroiled in a brutal war, with forces under Catherine and Victor locked in violent conflict. No longer bound by traditional chivalry, 
the battle shifted to raw aggression, leading to heavy casualties. This period was marked as the wave of atrocities by historians. Amidst this, Catherine and Marshal Jackson Davian strategized to conquer while maintaining their supply lines. Catherine maintained robust public support despite the bloody conflict thanks to strategic advice from Field Marshals Davion and Simon Gallagher. On another front, Duke George Hasek's mysterious actions served both the Allied cause and his personal interests. Notwithstanding the ongoing civil war, Duke Sandoval continued to garner popularity due to his aggressive stance against the Draconis Combine, fulfilling his commitment to secure the border. Victor's campaign in the Alliance is a mixed bag of triumphs and failures, stirring up a blend of allies and enemies. Task Force 11A under Maria Esteban and Linda MacDonald displays its potency with a win on York. Victor strategically dispersed his units from Clinton, sparking confusion within the LAAF and easing his getaway. Further, the distraction of the Clan Jade Falcon's invasion of the Alliance assisted his covert move to Thorin. As the third phase of the Civil War unfolded, Duke Sandoval was content with his successful campaigns against the Draconis Combine. However, Unbeknownst to him, the Combine Ghost Bear War had ceased, freeing Combine forces to confront the Federated Sons. This miscalculation led to future complications. As this phase ended, the former Federated Commonwealth mourned its lost innocence amid escalating battles. Clan Jade Falcon capitalized on the chaos to fortify their territories during the Fedcom Civil War. Con Moth Pride of Clan Jade Falcon used this opportunity to enhance their military might and train a new generation of warriors. This period saw an escalation in the conflict, especially along the Lyran Falcon border, with the Jade Falcons launching aggressive assaults on numerous worlds in 3064. Phase 1 of the Jade Falcon's incursion involved a series of forceful attacks, which were eventually repelled by General Adam Steiner's strategic operations bludgeon and audacity. In Phase 2, Steiner led a task force into the Falcon's occupation zone, while Khan Marth continued to make significant advancements. Simultaneously, Khan Phelan Kell's Wolf Clan initiated counteroffensives from the Ark Royal Defense Cordon, leading to a complex chessboard of shifting loyalty and zones of control. The final phase brought a period of stabilization as all parties consolidated their gains, recaptured lost worlds, and braced for the next wave of conflict. Under the leadership of Khan Vladimir Ward, Clan Wolf, embarked on a campaign into Jade Falcon's occupation zone, only to be met with a firm counterattack. Despite the exchange of several worlds and the Wolf Clan securing some territories, the Jade Falcons ultimately maintained their upper hand. Against the backdrop of these power dynamics, other clans like the Star Adders, Hell's Horses, Diamond Sharks, and Snow Ravens began to pose threats to both Wolf and Jade Falcon. Despite seizing fewer worlds than an Operation Revival, the Jade Falcon incursion proved strategically successful due to their unique fighting doctrine, combining fearlessness, superior skills, and relentless fervor. This strategy ensured Khan Marth Pride a swift and victorious campaign against her adversaries, the aftermath of the devastating civil war continued to ravage hundreds of worlds, resulting in millions of civilian casualties. Despite some victories by the Allied forces, the Archon's loyalists maintained control over the Lyran Alliance and Federated Sons, aided by political appointees and nobles. External threats 
like the Jade Falcon incursion and the Draconi's combined reprisal offered a rare unifying element, drawing citizens together against common enemies. Marshal Jackson, Davian grappled with troop shortages while staying loyal to the Archon in the fourth wave of the Federated Sun's civil war. Tensions heightened due to political disputes and direct communication between the Archon and Field Marshal Gallagher. Meanwhile, the Draconis Combine was regaining lost worlds and launched new attacks, revealing a surprising foe for Duke Sandoval. The Free Sky Rebellion was pivotal in the Lyran Alliance Civil War's fourth wave. Sky Native units and several Lyran Line units joined the Rebellion, escalating the conflict. Loyalist attempts to sabotage Victor's supply network failed, representing a significant strategic setback. Duke James Sandoval confronted Coordinator Theodore Kurita, leading to the loss of four Combine worlds and raising tensions further. Despite progress with General Adam Steiner brokering a deal to end the Jade Falcon incursion, the Free Sky Rebellion and Theodore Kurita's incursions bring uncertainty. A shadow loomed over the Federated Suns and the Lyran Alliance, indicating a challenging future, even as the war seemingly inched toward its end. The summer of 3065 marked a pivotal shift in the Civil War as territorial disputes led to battles over honor and allegiance. Loyalties between Catherine and Victor fractured following the Jade Falcon incursion and the exposure of Catherine's horrific acts against her citizens. Meanwhile, after the costly Cathal battle, the Civil War began to de-escalate, although Catherine, misled by her advisors, was determined to quell Duke George Hazzock's rebellion in the Capellan March. Victor's departure from the Alliance affected the fifth wave of battles against the Federated Sons, and his remote leadership notably dampened the morale of Allied forces. This allowed Nandi Steiner to initiate attacks on the Allied worlds. Despite fierce opposition and blockades, Loyalists managed to maintain control over Hesperus, a strategically crucial world, even as Richard Steiner's power grabs led to escalating border tensions with the Free World's League. Duke James Sandoval found himself locked in a challenging war against coordinator Theodore Kurita of the Draconis Combine. Kirita re-established control over most key combined worlds and achieved substantial victories in Sandoval's territory. Meanwhile, the Federated Sons grappled with a leadership crisis just as the Civil War began to wane with the start of Wave 5. The intense combat of the Civil War drained the two nations of resources and manpower, with key battle zones monopolizing crucial transport resources. As many dependent worlds suffered, public support for Catherine dwindled, and demands for her resignation grew. Still, Victor and his siblings found no consensus as potential successors. Though the war neared its end, it was set to enter a desperate phase that would challenge all involved. The sixth wave of the Civil War saw a decrease in conflict, but desperation rose with the escalating tyranny of Archon Catherine. Her draconian rule led to widespread casualties and human rights violations, devastating the Lyran Alliance and Federated Sun economies. Catherine remained unwavering in her quest for victory, while her brother, Victor, was compelled to extend the conflict to prevent her potential resurgence. The Allies and Loyalists were embroiled in a power struggle for the Federated Sons. Despite the Allies' success in capturing the majority of regional capitals, the Loyalists clung to critical areas like New Avalon. Even as Catherine's grip over the Federated Sons weakened, she remained a potent threat until her expulsion from power. While Victor continued his campaign in the Federated Sons, 
the Alliance factions shifted their attention to resolving the conflict. Significant battles on Kavanaugh II and Dalkeith were unfolding, and a peace deal finally brought the war with the Draconas combined to an end in March. Despite failing to secure a regional capital, the Combine declared victory, although disputes over prisoner of war captivity and purported war crimes continued. As the Civil War drew closer to its conclusion, both factions braced themselves for brutal final showdowns. The exhausted citizens of the Laren Alliance and the Federated Sons eagerly awaited the conflict's end. With her diminishing authority and sanity, the Archon relied more on luck than strategic planning, indicating that imminent battles could be more horrific than previous wartime atrocities. The end was within reach, but it seemed agonizingly distant. After four years of conflict, the war between the Lyran Alliance and the Federated Sons was climaxing. The outcome would determine if a tyrannical sister or an ambitious brother would gain power. As the final stages were entered, the focus shifted toward the battles on New Avalon and Tharkad, with the latter determining the fate of the Federated Sons. New Avalon, key to the Federated Sons, became the primary focus as the first Allied troops landed. Despite ongoing skirmishes elsewhere, like the Marlet conflict and rebellions on Akamar and Genoa, New Avalon was the principal battleground, hosting over half a million soldiers fighting for control over the Federated Sons. Meanwhile, in the Lyran Alliance, the capture of Tharkad took precedence. Peter Steiner, Davion, forced to react to the resistance from his grand-aunt, Nandi Steiner, took decisive action. Following his grandmother, Katrina Steiner's footsteps, Peter uses Lyran forces to take leadership and oust the current administration. Interestingly, while the 39th Avalon Hussars were present, they were not used in the conflict, suggesting that this power struggle was for the Lyran people to resolve. With an armistice on the horizon, these epic battles would shape the future of both the Lyran Alliance and the Federated Sons. The war between New Avalon and Tharkad had ended, leading to the fall of Catherine Steiner Davian and her council from the Federated Sons and Lyran Alliance. This concluded the Federated Commonwealth Alliance and opened a chapter of healing and reconciliation moving past the war's bitterness to focus on a brighter future. While opinions on the war's cause vary, its aftermath unfolded six months later. The Civil War dealt heavy blows to both nations, with tens of millions of casualties, substantial economic devastation, military losses, and a widespread humanitarian crisis. Both nations saw over 75% of their militaries engaged, losing two generations of soldiers, six warships, senior leadership, and territory to neighboring states. The full extent of the war's impact remained a mystery. Leaders Victor Steiner Davian, Archon Peter Steiner Davian, and Duchess Yvonne Steiner Davian were now steering the Federated Sons and the Lyran Alliance toward a new period of reconstruction and reconciliation. Victor stepped down from his claim to the thrones, leaving Peter and Yvonne to lead the Lyran Alliance and the Federated Sons, respectively. Despite the challenges, extensive rebuilding efforts began, breathing hope and unity into the citizenry. Though the leaders anticipated it would take decades to restore their militaries fully, the progress symbolized a significant step forward from the war shadows. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the FedCom Civil War era. We are still in a blackout, but let us know which side you support in this civil war. We will see you next time, and remember, in Lyran Commonwealth, Atlas scouts you.